Good morning, my gamers, or YouTuber, or YouTube viewer, or something, something. Anyway, today we got a video. It's about um, spooky stuff, but it's more realistic. It's not like new stuff. Okay, I got his idea from, uh, what's his name? Moisty Critical. He's epic. Go check him out. Anyway, he's never going to know I actually exist. Anyway, back to my thing. Um... It's from Mr. Nightmare. They do, like, a lot of this company sort of thing, but, like, more realistic situations, like, really, like, dis I guess disturbing creeps. Of course, there is definitely some fake ones out there. Those stories, like, okay, I was at the mall. And then this guy, he just, like, took me. What the heck does that mean? There are stories like that, which are fake, clearly. But then there's the real ones, which have a lot of detail and everything. Which is also fake ones that are also very detailed, too. But they're quite obvious that it's fake because it's damn near impossible. Anyway. Home security technology has come a long way. Doorbell cameras such as Ring have become extremely popular in Make recent years. Audio. Acting as an effective deterrent from potential robbers or any other kind of unwelcomed guests. Their ability to record video whenever someone comes no, within range to the front of a house or any, any other with the million in the following. Bell cameras installed throughout America has come a lot of creepy footage, including the camera in the LeMay household. It happened on a cold December night in 2019. A stranger hacked into the LeMay family's ring security system and had oh. watched them around their home. And for nearly 10 minutes, he interacted with 8-year-old Alyssa. Not only was he able to watch her, but he was able to communicate noises to her, as he had access to a second system placed in the girl's oh, babysitter's no. room downstairs. Alyssa no, then heard music coming from upstairs me? in her bedroom, which she shared with her... What? What's happening? Okay. I just want to go over this one thing. There's this annoying YouTube glitch where the audio will just kind of cut out. And you have to completely reload the whole app and find the video again. It's so annoying. It's happened so many times. I did not think it was going to work. That wasn't happen here. It usually lasts for like five seconds or so. So ten. Or twenty. There we go. Okay, so a little girl just being constantly watched by this creep that hacked the camera. That is so. Oh, what the hell? Okay, there we go. So then the camera's probably lighting program got fixed realized someone was watching her in the bedroom because the blue light from the ring camera was blinking then in a strange man's voice she heard this Hello there. the eight-year-old gasped and tried to figure out where the voice was coming from she would pick up her toys to see if they were what was making the noises obviously that's she typically the room what a child moments do. later the man started screaming a racial slur at her over and over until Alyssa responded by screaming this And proceeded parents, to tell walking. her to go call her mom the racial slur and the man that she repeated back to him. Moments later, the voice would reply to Alyssa asking, Who are you? by saying, He's her best friend. He's Santa Claus. Who is that? I'm your best friend. I'm Santa Claus. Screw you. I'm, I'm Santa Claus. Don't you want to be my best friend? And... I'm Santa Claus! After all of this, the man tries to tell that the girl she can do whatever she oh wants, including break things in her room. I'm your best friend. You can do whatever you want right now. You can mess up your room. You can break your TV. Okay, let's get it, let's get it straight here. Santa Claus and best friend are big two no-nos. I know this kid would not realize that because this kid's eight. Um, but, like, 
do whatever you want. I may have seen this one the through family a different who resides YouTuber in Memphis, who Tennessee, to hoped to use the device to keep an eye on their daughters while they played. The scary thing is that it took only a few days for the camera to be hacked. Perhaps the scariest thing is that no one knows how long he had access to the device. This could have gone on even longer if the hacker decided not to produce any sounds through the device. Put yourself in the little girl's shoes. Imagine creepy, hearing a though. creepy song playing in your bedroom, not knowing where it's coming from, only to realize that it's coming from a camera system that you set up in there, and that someone could well, be not, watching. Not you. She probably didn't set it up. It was probably her parents who set it up just because for safety. I just don't know why there's three beds. So where's the other two? I don't know what time of day it is, but it's clearly like somewhat later. I'm gonna, I want to find another one. Oh. Okay. All right. So one thing I do find. If you see the word true, sometimes it could mean it's, it's not Growing true. Growing up in the suburbs. Yeah, it's completely fake. One thing I always enjoyed in the summertime was the ice cream truck, specifically Mr. Softy. As a very little kid, any time I'd hear ice the song truck? of the Mr. Oh, Softy yeah. truck echoing through the streets, yep, exactly. I'd my mom for Everyone a few does and run outside to wave down the truck. I remember one of the first times I was ever left home alone. I was, I think, no. seven years old. My mom was away somewhere, and my dad no, was off if you're that seven, day. No, you he apparently don't entrusted me to be seven. home alone for a few minutes while he ran to the store. Seven years old. He was definitely the less responsible parent. I was in the living room watching Spongebob, I'm pretty sure, when I heard the familiar sound of the Mr. Softy tune outside. I rushed to the kitchen and climbed onto a chair to reach the little basket on the ledge that usually had stray dollars and coins inside. I grabbed a dollar bill and some coins. I couldn't tell you the exact amount, obviously. I ran outside to the street and waved the truck down just in time. It pulled over, and the oldish man came to the window this asking story, what I wanted. I'm... When I asked for a specialty cone, he told me I was a little short with the I'm money pretty I sure had. This is a fake story. I believe I told him I didn't have any more money because my parents weren't home. I distinctly remember him asking me, "You're home but alone?" But he—I don't think As he if you were confirming it. I think he gets his community to make I it said up. yes, and he started He's acting all friendly and understanding. He told me to come into the truck so that I could make my own ice cream cone. I no. stepped into the truck. That and is man a went and shut the door. He told me to help myself to whatever ice cream I wanted. He said he was going to show me how to be an ice cream man, and he went to the driver's seat of the truck and started driving us somewhere. My young, innocent self thought this was all super exciting as I was pouring soft yeah. syrup ice cream into a cone. I would probably be too. That cone especially since started I was wondering dumb where we were going. <laughs> We had been driving for a while. I went to the front of the truck to yeah, ask if you're him. Ever and he asked me if in a more stern voice than he'd been speaking in to please go truck? stay in the a, back of the that's truck. That's a fat no. I listened to him. My appetite for more ice cream was suddenly gone as I got more uncomfortable. We went from a busy main road to a quiet residential road. At some point, I noticed the ice cream truck's music wasn't playing, and he was driving rather fast. Oh. The truck finally stopped in front of some abandoned looking building, and he asked me to come follow him outside to the building. Now you run. But not before we heard a tapping on the door of the truck. I heard a familiar, concerned voice yelling through the crack of the door. The man opened the door, and my neighbor Margie walked into the truck. She saw me and came to grab me by the arm and pull me out of the truck. She told me to wait in her car while she ran back to yell at the man. I was extremely confused at first. The man in the ice cream truck yeah, sped I off can, down the street. I see where this kid's... This was a time before cell phones. She couldn't just call 911 right away. I think it's real, she ran but to the it's drama. House. At first, I was confused. It is, have, it is Obviously, definitely I don't know. She was asking for the owner's phone. She called 911. I'm sure she reported a suspicious ice cream truck and attempted kidnapping. I don't remember the rest except telling Margie my story, her driving me home to be greeted by my dad and cop cars, and then being told to go inside after telling a couple police officers what happened. The exact ice cream truck was found. I'm not sure how they did it. Maybe by investigating street camera footage and getting the plate number. I was made to confirm the driver was in fact the man who took me into the truck. He was sentenced to prison. That's all my parents told Good. me. I don't think they know his name. Okay, Either that, that or little they didn't flickery want to blur me. thing is not definitely very nice not in a memory I, I like, like thinking that. back on. <laughs> um.
That would, that definitely did sound real. It could be. It could be fake. I don't know. Up until I was 28, I used to live with but my dad parents is in Camden, though, Maine, honestly. a rural boat town. They now were hardly town. ever home because of work and just traveling a lot. So I'd hold down the fort a lot. My parents' property is large and private. So when they weren't home, I'd often throw little parties. <laughs> this was one of those nights. I had maybe 15 to 20 people over, and we all hung out in the backyard. It started around 6 p.m., and people started leaving around 11 p.m. By midnight, everyone was gone, and I was absolutely shot from a mixture of having been in the sun most of the day and then drinking since around 6. I changed and got into bed. Before I could even fall asleep, though, so this guy's I heard something like one would not expect to hear this late at night. It was the sound of an ice cream truck, only it was a tune I'd never heard before. Whoa! Kind of creepy sounding one. The tune got louder until it seemed to be right outside. I lay there waiting a minute or two for it to go away, but when it didn't, I finally got up and went to the window to look outside. I couldn't see anything from my bedroom window, so I went downstairs and looked out no. the living room window. I could vaguely see what had to be an ice cream truck out on the lawn. My heart started pounding me inside of my chest. Who was yeah. it? Why were they here? What did they want? That is so I creepy. Paced around the living room for a bit, not knowing whether to call the police truck, or my no dad. Music, anything? Just simply that's for enough. Them to leave. That's all. That's, a, that's enough for me. No. The awful wrong. tune of the ice cream truck didn't stop though. It grew sickening. I ended up finally snapping and going out the front door to the porch. There, I could more clearly see the ice cream truck parked on our property, like a little less than a hundred feet away from the porch. It was parked on the grass, and it wasn't exactly a typical looking ice cream truck. It was like a white van with ice cream pictures stamped or painted on. It was a mix of confused and worried, oh, mostly so worried. Creepy. Saying it was an abnormal sight would be a gross understatement. I stepped onto the grass with my bare feet and walked just a little closer to the van. The headlights weren't on, so when I got close enough, I saw there was no one in the driver's seat. Oh no. When I got even closer, I saw one of the sliding doors on the side was open. I suddenly felt as though I could be jumped at any second. I looked around me in a panic, and then ran back inside the house and locked the door. Good. Now I did call 911. Yeah. I asked them to please hurry. The woman asked me to walk around the house and check to make sure everything was locked. I started from the main floor and worked down to the den to the back door. And the glass panel on the back door was shattered. It was unlocked and opened. I whispered this to the 911 operator, even though I was truly freaking out inside. She told me to go to a room with a lockable door and wait there until officers arrived. So I tiptoed to the nearest bathroom and locked the door. The operator told me to stay on the line and be quiet. Okay, maybe they're Two not. Later, or someone on the other side of the door tried turning the doorknob. No. And they banged on the door three times. The woman on the phone said quietly that she heard it and for me to remain quiet and calm. Then 19. I heard the back door That's to the guessing. house slam shut, and half a minute later, the tune of the ice cream truck slowly faded away as the van was driven off. I told the woman, but she said to wait until officers arrived. They took a disgustingly long time to arrive. I was waiting in that bathroom for another five minutes. If they arrived in a timely manner, they could have caught whoever was at my parents' house. Instead, all that happened was I got a police report. My personal theory is the ice cream truck tune was supposed to be a distraction or something while one of the people in it broke into the house, as I'm sure there were more than one person in that van. I'm happy this happened to me when I was 23 and not, say, 10 23. years old. Okay, that's our age. That would have traumatized That's me. the age. That is... That one is really creepy. I can't... I can't... I can only somewhat imagine it. But I'm sure that's... He just didn't give all details. This happened a long time ago. I was in the sixth grade. That one was People so used to call creepy, me Jimmy until that around so high school. Creepy. Especially if it was like 18 years old. There was this ice cream truck no, that would always drive old? down my block once a day in the warmer months. The driver got to know me on a more personal level. He knew my name and I knew his, Bernard. I'd go outside for ice cream so often that he'd slow down or sometimes even stop for a minute in front of my house waiting for me to come outside, knowing I was a frequent customer. Anytime I'd buy ice cream from his truck, I'd always get the same Oreo ice cream cup. He'd always stop and talk to me for a few minutes, and sometimes he'd give me free ice cream. Why are there two people? There was this one Friday though, and I remember I've it was never a Friday seen two people because it was the start of the truck, weekend so that my parents were going away. Which I've still On never this seen. Friday, Bernard once again passed my house, 
and it was one of the days that I went outside to buy from him. On this day though, he gave it to me for free again, and because of that I stuck around and chatted with him for a while. He asked me how things were going and whatnot, and I told him I was excited to have the house to myself for the weekend. He was surprised that I would have the house to myself at such a young oh, age. No. He said I was lucky and to enjoy. Then he drove off, and the truck eventually disappeared along with the music. Yo, the rest how of the fast story is the part that's that that's you may not even believe. I stayed up late in my room because my parents weren't home. I was playing video games on my computer when I heard the sound of Bernard's ice cream truck. It didn't start from the distance and slowly get louder. No, it literally seemed to turn on right outside my house. I went to my window and saw the truck right outside, playing the music at this late hour in the night, past yeah, no. midnight. It had to be Bernard, but what was he doing? Oh my gosh. The music suddenly stopped and the truck's lights turned off. I opened my window a crack just to listen for what might be going on. Just the sound of crickets, until I saw Bernard appear from the darkness, quickly approaching my window, yelling Jimmy. He stopped when his face basically banged into my window, and he started telling me to come outside. He told me I could get all the free ice cream I wanted, but the way he was speaking, he seemed off. He seemed like he was on something. His movements were spastic and sporadic. He then tried pulling my window further open across. Oh, he said grade six, so twelve or so, I think. I don't I can't remember what that what the age would usually be for grade six. So about like Now he's probably like around his nineteen his early twenties, this per person who made the story. Or was telling it. And I screamed and yanked it closed. He started knocking on the window, and I screamed and begged him to leave or I'm calling the cops. And when I said that, he turned around and ran back to his truck. The lights turned back on, and he drove off into the night without the music playing. I was so scared I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to call my parents, and I was scared to call the cops. I just locked my bedroom door and tried to go to sleep. It was a long night before I fell asleep. Wow. Bernard never returned to my block after that. But anytime I'd hear an ice cream truck passing by, I'd get paranoid it was him. That is so creepy. No, 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 that is... That's like PTSD right there. Uh, that is ice cream truck PTSD. Whoa. Hold on, how long is this video so far? I kind of want to watch that one. Open recorder, 18 minutes. It's 12 minutes. Okay, we'll skip through a little bit. All right, story one. I'm sure we've all gotten computer virus. Okay. Um, first of all, not all of us have gotten com computer virus. Second of all, it's a lot harder to get one now <laughs> because security is way up because it's a lot more uh, acknowledged and actually present. Viruses at some point in our lives, ranging from basic malware to Trojan horses. I was one the day Trojan horses, yeah, that's still when I was a teenager. Egg. This random, suspicious-looking email. Egg. <laughs> it was apparently a job offer, or rather an offer for an interview for a summer internship position with this company I'd never heard of. There was a link at the bottom of the email that said it led to the... I've been... Okay, hold on, let me lower the... ...company's website. I've actually been applying to a lot of jobs, and the reason why, I've only applied to, like, big, really well-known companies. Because I'm, I'm afraid of... What else is going on behind the scenes? The load. Little There's small ones. Screen. After refreshing the page a few times, leading to nothing, I closed the page and deleted the email. The next day after school was when I noticed my computer was working overall much slower. It took a while to What's start with, up. Okay, that inversion thing is an edit. That's a video edit. Done by a Mr. Seconds. Nightmare person. It was extremely aggravating. I attempted to do a disk cleanup to speed it up. But it didn't do anything. 
I tried restarting it a few times. Oh. Nothing either. What? So I decided to use my mom's desktop computer in the basement to do my homework. The next time I turned on my computer, things were a lot worse. A pop-up kept coming up on my screen that I'd okay, never no, that's seen not before. A it kept thing, saying that's all actually... capitals, error, error. And every time I tried to exit out, another one would pop up. My mouse was locked you just in the window, do a meaning I full couldn't move the cursor one. anywhere outside that's what the you do. window. At this point, disconnect from Ethernet, disconnect from Internet, whatever you do, disconnect. This was the most aggressive virus I'd ever seen. I pressed Control Alt Delete repeatedly until ever, it finally ever responded. Get some sort of virus I was able to bring up the task and installed and restart some. the Explorer. Which oh, actually, actually, I have the installed issue. one before. I was able to use my laptop again. So first thing I did was rush to download an antivirus program and no. detect whatever was on my computer. The program did detect a large number of viruses and malware on my laptop. So I purchased the full version so that it could No! That's that's not what you do. That's not what you do. Come on, please don't tell me it was a scam too. My computer. Or virus. After a couple hours of me playing StarCraft on my computer, the program alerted me that the scan was complete and the viruses had been removed. The yeah, usually didn't exactly uh, go back virus to normal scans take a long time. That's that. normal. Days later, I had a new suspicious email when checking my school email account. It was titled Open This Now. I guess I'm a fool for choosing to open it after just getting a virus that I suspected was from that first This guy opened it again. He is a bit of a fool. Um, I do put some blame on him. He should have... I mean, considering the time period, yeah, I guess, okay, maybe the knowledge of viruses, scams, and all that wasn't as present. I think it's Windows XP. It's not. I don't think it's. It's not, it's not Windows Seven. Windows Seven was way different looking. So I think it's XP, um, which is probably the most revolutionary, which really did kick off Windows. I think I don't really know the history of that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But um, you get something that says, "Open now." That's a no. If it's modern, like especially present now, yeah, Windows XP. It says right there, right up here, Windows XP. Anyway, first suspicious email. Upon opening the email, I realized it was blank. You see what you do here? If you attached. see open this now, the or some were weird to me. crap, I didn't you want to check open it the email, email what itself. It was. It's so Gmail and trying to be email formal, about my It's day. fake. However, a few well, hours later. Next time I got back on my laptop, another error message kept popping up on my screen like last time. This time it said, you didn't open your email, in all capital letters. I control all deleted myself out of the pop-up once again, with my heart now racing. I opened my email again, and there was another new email, again titled, open this now, this time in all capital letters. Feeling threatened, I opened the email and downloaded the content. You're it was a collection of videos. That's what you, you block. Through my webcam. It was just me sitting there using my laptop. I don't want to get into detail, but I felt sick to my stomach when I realized the video captured me doing some yeah, buddy, embarrassing just things. Laptop. Just, just burn it. Along with the video. Get a new a email account. Containing only my address. There was one more video in a separate folder. It was taken inside of a van speeding past my parents' house. Creepy man's laughter could be heard over the sound of the wind blowing into the car. I placed a piece of tape over my webcam, saved all of my important files to a bunch of flash drives, and did a factory reset of my computer. Before doing that, I replied to the email that I was getting the police involved, and that's what my parents and I did. We reported the emails and evidence to the police, and they said they'd use their forensics team to find the culprit. Unfortunately, this hacker really knew what he was doing, because they weren't able to track him. Oh. So burners. And he was in a van, so... Yeah, he didn't know what he was doing. Damn. I'd say this happened around five years ago. Five years... Okay, five this years game? ago. Where is this video uploaded? I need to see. September 10th, 20th, so... Okay. There is virus knowledge at this time came out that I really wanted but didn't want to drop $60 on it. It was really 2018 so when I really kicked off. I found some website off Google. 
It had some quick text tutorial on how to download the game for free, involving simply clicking the download button at the bottom. I don't. Of the game. I'm scared to download pirated games. The program games. started I've been wanting to, especially for the time because I don't want to pay I money for something I'm not going to play. There's no scared. game in the folder. It was just a bunch of weird text documents. So I already knew I was scammed. I deleted the folder from my computer at once, and that was that. Or at least I thought it was. Oh, Windows 10. After that, like I periodically Windows started 10, no. hearing these weird sound effects and short 20 second cartoonish songs playing in the background on my computer. I tried to find what could be causing it in the task manager, but I couldn't. So I restarted my computer. And that seemed to fix it at least for a little bit. But then, as the week progressed, I noticed more and more stuff acting up. Oh. I get bizarre pop-ups, and random Internet Explorer tabs would open with sketchy websites and advertisements. My antivirus program wasn't doing anything to fix the issue, so I was planning on taking it somewhere to get it looked at the next day. In the meantime, I turned the computer off for a couple hours and just did other things with my day. When I returned to my room to prepare for bed, I turned the computer back on to see if anything had maybe changed. Upon signing into my account and getting to the desktop, I was greeted with something I wasn't expecting. My desktop wallpaper had been changed to some grotesque, horrific creature standing outside of someone's window. I nearly fell back in my seat as I saw this. No one in my family could have done this. As I that is... Had passwords on all of my oh, devices. that was beyond creepy. I turned my computer off by holding the power button for a few seconds this time. I didn't turn it back on that night. I planned on bringing it to the Geek Squad first thing in the morning before yeah. I class. I went to sleep early since yeah, I didn't bring have my laptop to really do anything on. I woke up at some bizarre hour. Whoa. It was still completely pitch black outside. I woke up startled from something, but I didn't know what it was. Not until I heard it again. It was a loud, aggressive bang at my window. What the hell? I looked at my window which had the blinds angled half closed. I somehow gathered the courage to get up and twist the rod, angling the blinds open completely. I saw something taped to the glass on the other side. I took my phone and rose the screen up to the window, revealing the same picture as what had been set as my desktop wallpaper. No. I didn't see who no. put it there. I didn't care. No. No. I went to get my dad and show him. When he saw the picture, he went under his bed to grab his gun and storm outside. He screamed at the top of his lungs that if whoever was out there ever came back, he'd unload the entire clip into their skulls. Damn, the day, the you got a good dad, my friend. You should be glad he's not going to get milk. And the two workers who were helping me said my computer was flooded with different types of malware. And after I told them my story, they were convinced I got a virus from trying to download that game, which apparently opened the door for new viruses. This somehow led to me... My problem? With Minecraft mods, I don't know what I'm actually installing. So I've never gone into Minecraft mod, and I'm too scared to try. I've only done the, um, what's it called? Bedrock Edition, where I had actually done a lot of research, making sure this one site was good, and I stuck to that site. And I had made, like, I think one or two videos of Minecraft Bedrock mods. I think it was only one video. I don't think I ever got to another because, well, then my old computer broke because <laughs> Windows Update installed itself a virus somehow. Kind of. It just really made it slow as hell. Anyway, I'll leave it story for another time. Proceed. Me becoming a target of some serious hacker who, to this day, I still don't know why they targeted me. I didn't get my laptop back for two days, but they worked their magic and my computer was once again clean. I think my dad scared off whoever was stalking me. And just knowing how protective my dad is, and the fact that he has a gun. Mad respect for that dad, though. Mad respect. Was the only reason I was able to sleep after that. Searching for a better way to collaborate with your team? Try Miro, an online whiteboard. Hmm. Okay. Last one. Oh. Year? I'm currently 26 years old. So this happened three years ago because I know I was 23 at the. Uh. 2020. Okay, I can't think right now, but I'm pretty sure it's 2017. Time. 
It was my last semester in college. 26 to me. I had to do an extra semester to fit all my credits. I was doing really poorly in one of my coding classes, so I used some forums a lot to help. <laughs> I was reading a specific yeah, coding post regarding C++. So hard. And some deleted user posted a link to an archive folder allegedly containing answers to the textbook problems that I was currently working on. Oh, it's and that go away. was actually a godsend given my current situation. So Man, it looks like typical coding class answers. That's what it actually looks like. So that's not virus code. Um, it's not, it's not Java. I don't know what it is. It must it's probably like C plus or something. Not that I ever condone cheating. I was just undergoing an unbelievable amount of stress with this class. C plus plus. That's what it is. Okay. I used WinRAR to decompress the folder and view the contents. Interestingly enough, there was another compressed folder inside the folder I just decompressed. When I tried to decompress this one as well, I saw it was password protected. In one of the text documents titled README, it said to obtain the password, run the file titled run.exe. I checked the folder and saw there was in fact a file called run.exe. No. So I ran it. The biggest mistake I made. That's a no. The computer made a weird noise. If here's if you ever get a random dot exe file to just read something, delete the file, scan your system, do some serious cleanup quickly, disconnect from internet, whatever you can. Just so it doesn't, because what can happen if it's if it's Ethernet, it can actually go through the Ethernet and go to another computer. I know a lot about computer stuff. <laughs> Just so you know. For half a second, a small blank window popped up, then disappeared. Nothing else happened. So I tried running it at least three more times. No, why would you do that? From a foreign thing, you don't you have no idea. No. But when nothing happened, I gave up and put the folder into the recycle bin. It wasn't until the middle of the night that something else happened. I woke up to a screaming sound from inside my room. I nearly shat myself. I found myself pushing up against the wall at first, dazed and confused. I saw the light of my laptop screen glimmering through the closed lid. The screaming sound seemed to be coming from my laptop as well. See, I keep my laptop on overnight, just plugged in. And I always keep the screen closed. I didn't understand how the laptop screen could be on or how it could be making noise if the lid was closed. What was it closed like? Okay, there's two types of closed. There's like half closed like it is right here, where it's completely closed, where the, where the screen is touching the keyboard, practically. The sight and sound emitting from my laptop in the middle of the night was surreal. I felt scared approaching it to turn it off. When I opened the screen, my desktop wallpaper was changed to a disturbing, screaming face of this horrible creature. It was nightmarish. All my desktop icons were gone, and the taskbar was red. I couldn't move the mouse. Pop-ups shortly started appearing, all of them saying run, all as that horrible screaming continued. I held the power button on my laptop until it turned off, and I unplugged the cord. Obviously I knew I had a virus, but that was just something else. I booted my computer into safe mode the next morning and restored it back to an earlier What the hell is this? What kind of computer is this? Hold up. Oh, that was the creature? I swear I've seen an SCP cover, uh, SCP video thumbnail. I want to go back. Coding, coding, where's coding? Where's the coding stuff? Three. Yep, it is an old computer. It's probably a school computer. I'd hope. Um, you know, just ran out letters. Anyway, and that did the trick. But a few days later, I received something in the mail with no return address. And inside the envelope was a big printed picture of that screaming face. 
On the back, it said, run. I crumpled it up and threw it in the trash, which was a mistake because it could have been used as evidence. But I never received anything else in the mail after that. When I think back now... Cannon? Has other payload dates, so this will have to do. I don't even live in Canada. This is really a crappy idea for life, anyway. Oh. This guy. This guy just literally admitted. Whoever this person is, they literally admitted that they are doing it. Under that .exe file wasn't named run as in telling you to run the file. Rather it meant run. Alright. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's, pl that's, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough for me. I can't do any more. <laughs> The, those virus things. I know that picture is just taken off of like Getty images. I guarantee if I were to take that picture, put it in Google Lens, it would just pop up like 10 billion pictures. Of course, I wouldn't search for it because some weird Google hack could happen. I don't know. I'm gonna get out of there. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. I, I really did not expect that virus one to be that creepy. I thought it would just be like cameras on laptops and stuff. But it wasn't. <laughs> that that got me. That one scared me a lot. <laughs> the thing is, it could literally happen to anyone. I could do it right I could end up getting a virus right after this video with weird stuff. But um, okay, one thing I, wanted, I just want to bring up: if you have get a virus, disconnect it from Ethernet immediately. If it is, it's the it's like a weird. You usually have three, one to three cables on your computer. You have your power one, which usually just leave that in. Um, you might have like a USB thing in for like your mouse, and then there's the Ethernet. It's got like a weird square thing. It's a little pokey thing on the bottom which kind of locks it in place take that out as quickly as you can disconnect it from Wi-Fi if it's connected to Wi-Fi and then just try to try your best to wipe it if it's like if you're not freaked out if you're freaked out um, does the police deal with hackers I know deal. I know deal with like serious hackers trying to hack government crap, but like just everyday, typical hackers just hacking like my laptop here or something. Anyway, um, once you just disconnect it, try your best to wipe it. If you can't because it's just that broken, just shut it down. And unplug it. Not because it can do some weird stuff to it, it's just because eventually the battery will die out and the thing can't even do a single, like, your, your laptop can't do anything because it's got no power. Or PC, anything. <sighs> That's what you do. Then you want to probably just get to someone that actually knows how to deal with this kind of stuff. Just whatever you do not connect it to internet. Because then it will try spreading even further. If it's that advanced. Because then the virus will literally end up on a different computer. Because of the Ethernet, and then your pretty, pretty much your modem is infected too. It basically becomes COVID, <laughs> quickly spreading.
anyway, that's all I got for you today. See ya. This video is not edited, I don't think. So, good day to you.